physically able to stand in the house of the Lord on today. For those even at home who might be comfortable, I need you to get uncomfortable. I need you to stand in the living room, in the, in the kitchen, in the dining room, the back porch, wherever you may be, as we look to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you because this is our excellence. We thank you, Lord, that you are God who continues to make ways for your people. He continues to bring us out of the miry pit. And you continue, Lord, to take us to a place of foundation and sound ground in you, Lord. What may be shaky in my life, God, can be sound in you. So, Lord, we thank you for being our God, for being our Lord, for being our Savior, for being our Redeemer, for being our Healer, for being our Deliverer. Whatever we need you to be, that's the God you are. And we say thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for 109 years. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, that you kept your hands. Not only on the church, but on the people of the church. And we're here today to celebrate. Because we know that you are an amazing God. So Lord, we thank you for the singing of song. We thank you, Lord, for the playing of the instruments on this day. Now, God, we need a word. Use me as your mouthpiece once again. Stand up in me, oh God. Do things in me right now. Let the Holy Spirit have its way. God, I'm asking for boldness. I'm asking for clarity. I'm asking for power. Stand up in this weak body and give me everything I need to declare your word. God, we believe that deliverance shall take place. Salvation shall take place in this place on this day. Because we came to lift up the name of our God together. So, God, we bless you now for our ushers on the door, for our health care ministry, Lord, for our sound and media team, for our nursery workers. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for deacons and trustees and deaconess and ministry leaders, for praise team, oh, God, and musicians. We thank you, God, for every person in this house, whether in person or online. Now, God, do something that we didn't expect you to do. Oh, God, we thank you right now. Do it in this place. Move like never before. God, that when we leave this place, we will declare and decree we met you in here. Your presence was in this place. Because you were here, God, I'll take you with me. And I'm going to celebrate you every chance I get. So, Lord, we bless you and we thank you. Draw someone to Jesus. Advance your kingdom and bring glory to your own name. We ask these things in the name of Jesus the Christ and for his very sake. Amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Can we give him a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm shouting for the Lord. I want to give God thanks for Reverend Jacotrin Potts preaching on last week. My God, my God. I told him I ain't need to preach this week. He's in the war. He's <laughs> in the war. He fed my soul on last week, and I believe he fed you too. And so I thank God that when I'm gone, he gives y'all some good meat. I try to be intentional with what I leave you with. And that's one of the things for me, Sister Thomasina, I'm not one of those preachers who does not lack confidence in what God is doing. I don't try to bring you somebody to, to make you think about me. I try to bring you somebody to say, that's the man of God. Or, that's the woman of God. And so we thank God for him preaching and the gift and the talent and abilities God has given him. And I want to thank you for every card, for every text message, every call, every gift on these 21 years that I've been able to celebrate with my better half. 21 years. I told her on Thursday, I knew there was something special about you when I met you, but I had no idea 
what God was doing. And so I'm grateful that in this season of ministry, Sister Deborah, I got somebody who's with me who ain't fighting against me. Allows <laughs> me to do what God has called me to do. Y'all yeah, ought to thank God you got a first lady that loves you. They'll never figure out something. I learned to appreciate it. There's some churches right now, the first lady going to another church. Oh, don't act like y'all don't know. The first lady don't even want to be around. Because they, they know. <laughs> so I'm grateful that we have a church that loves me and loves my wife and loves my daughter. All of that's important. Me and not love my family. So if you don't love my family, then your love ain't real love. Because they the ones sacrificed for me. Yeah. They asked yesterday, they were, I got to go, but they were on a Zoom call and they asked, Where was I at? So I said, No, I ain't the pastor. Then I, the pastor in the office working on that word for tomorrow. So many times she has to say that. The office working. Yeah, I don't wake up Sunday morning wondering. I put some work in. I'm glad. I, 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 don't, I don't play with my gift. I don't play with the anointing that God has given me back. I put some work in. So I'm grateful for that. I'm going to look at one verse on Mystic. I'm going to put it on the screen. Psalm 122. As I was wrestling this week, Sister Gloria, the Lord took me to this one verse. I hope it blesses you like it blessed me as I prepared on this week. Psalm 122, verse 1. If you've been in church any time in your life, you, you've heard this Amen. statement, but you probably didn't even know it was Psalm 122. And here it is. I'll read it in your hearing. It is this. New King James Version says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thus far, the reading of God's word, you can be seated in the house. I, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, on this 109th church anniversary, I, I want to propose something to you. That Sundays are meant to be the best day of the week. And our time together in corporate worship for two hours should be the best hours of your day and of your week. Sundays, Brother Danny, can be the best times if you ever let them be what God has intended it to be. But they can also be a waste of time depending on how you treat them. Sundays should be filled with excitement that we have an opportunity, Corey, yeah. to come to church to worship our God and have family time together here today. It's once again, we come to Sunday, we come to this place where we have an opportunity to worship God and have a family reunion. Yes, you and I are families. We are family. We are brothers and sisters yeah. in Christ. For many people, Brother Charles, a positive Sunday experience is a hit and miss kind of thing. Yeah. Some Sundays are amazing to them, while others not so much. Right. But when you are truly a child of God, right. every Sunday should be a Sunday, a day of celebration yeah. and thanksgiving to our God. Yeah. You, you see, Sunday, John, is an opportunity, it's an invitation for you and I to be in the presence of Almighty God uh, in a corporate setting. Uh, that you and I are in the Lord's house. Oh, God, let me help you real quick. See, sometimes people don't understand why they can play with this thing. It's because they don't recognize whose house uh, you come into. But when you understand and you really understand that this is the Lord's house, yeah. you come with an expectation yeah. uh, because God has given you another opportunity yeah. to come to this place. Yeah. Now, have you ever talked to someone and asked them why they don't go to church? Yeah. 
They don't give you so many reasons. They don't say things like church is boring. I have better things to do. It's my only day I can sleep in. It's my day of rest. My children play sports and we're busy on Sundays. I have to get ready for my day of football. Somebody ain't in church right now because they think the Carolina Panthers game is more important than the church. Uh, we like to keep our Sundays open because me and the family like to do brunch together. Uh, some people use Sundays to catch up uh, for what they're about to face uh, with this thing called Monday and the craziness of another week. Uh, people will give you every excuse in the world for not going to church. Uh, but there's one overriding reason, ma'am, uh, why you and I go to church, why we come to church, uh, and that is because the God we serve. Uh, that you and I have an encounter with God. Uh, we can expect to meet God in his place uh, with the community of faith. Uh, and the reason it's important that we come together and the reason God has the church is uh, because there are some times uh, we need to be together uh, so that we can worship and praise God together. I, I don't know what my neighbor might be going through, uh, but because I got my breakthrough, uh, they know that the breakthrough is on the way. Uh, yes, it might not be on your house, but, but it's coming down the street. Uh, and sometimes we have to get excited uh, about being in this place uh, because somebody else is being blessed and I know mine is coming right behind me. And we have an opportunity to come to this place for corporate worship, to seek our almighty God. The church provides us an opportunity for our brothers and sisters to come together and worship God. This time of worship uh, is imperative for us. Uh, it is a necessary, Lamendo, that the church uh, assembles. It's the bridge. Sunday is the bridge uh, from what I've been through uh, uh, to what I'm about to face. You don't know when to shout. Uh, when you look at what Sunday really represents, uh, I've been through some hell Monday through Saturday. Uh, now I work my way to the church uh, and it's going to bridge uh, what I'm about to face next week. Uh, and I got to get to the sanctuary. Uh, I got to get to the place of worship uh, because I need God to help me in the midst of it all. I need to come to worship because I need to know that God is working in my life. Is there anybody in this house that knows that God is working in your marriage? That God is working on your job? That God is working in your family? That God is working in your difficulties? No matter what you're going through today, God is working. Can I get a shout? Are you glad? talk about today. The David says, uh, I was glad when they said unto me, uh, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, and I just want to propose the question, uh, are you glad? Are you glad to be here? You see, Psalm 122 is a song of accents. Uh, it, it, the word accents literally means going up. Uh, it's about elevation. Type that in. Somebody shout elevation. It, it, it's a climatic progression, John. Psalm 122 uh, is a part of a collection of psalms. Uh, uh, that, uh, Psalm 120 through 134 covers uh, this book of psalms. Uh, that this is a chapter within psalms. Uh, that these these Jewish pilgrims uh, would work their way up to Jerusalem. Huh? Uh, I'm going to get you in a minute. Huh? They were working their way up to Jerusalem huh? for one of the feasts. Huh? They had to go up to Jerusalem huh? for the feast of Passover, the feast of Pentecost, and the feast of the Tabernacles. Huh? They sung while they went up. Huh? Uh, they didn't talk, they didn't read, but they sung the songs huh? as they worked their way up to Jerusalem huh? to a place huh, for worship. These psalms ascend to heights uh, of the glory of God uh, and the majesty of God. Uh, these psalms were designed to glorify.
by the Lord and help prepare the hearts of the saints of God for worship in the tabernacle and later on in the temple. Stay with me now. Psalm 122 is a psalm of David. It is a pilgrim song. It is a song of arrival. It is a song of someone who's been looking forward to arrival for quite some time. It's a psalm about going to church, about gathering with God's people for worship each week. Don't miss it. We come to church week after week to glorify God and to worship God. Whenever we make our way to the church, we ascend and don't descend. Let me help somebody. You didn't catch it. See, I ain't working my way down when I come to church, but I'm working my way up. You got to realize that the song of ascent is going up. So when you get to the place called sanctuary, whether in person or online, you might be burning down, but you're working your way up. I need somebody to grab that in the spirit. You came in the place heavy, but you realize when you hit the door of the sanctuary, you begin to see your spirit get uplifted. Sometimes, Corey, I can come in this place, burning in my body, body tired, body work with sickness, There's some uplifting that takes place in me. And what I've discovered is I came down sometimes, but I didn't remain down. And I want to encourage somebody today. You came in this place on this first Sunday. You might have been a little down, but I need you to say to yourself, I'm going up. God's about to elevate me. God's about to do something in me, for me, and through me that I came to the place called sanctuary to worship God. Turn me around, place my feet on solid ground. When I think of 
the goodness of Jesus uh, and all he has done for me. Uh, my soul cries out, uh, hallelujah. I, I thank God uh, for saving me. Uh, is there anybody to just give God a shout? Because you saved uh, on this first Sunday. And I rejoice. David says, I got a reason to rejoice. David says uh, that I get joy. When I come into the house of the Lord. David gladly accepts the invitation. Don't miss that. That you and I have an invitation. We have an opportunity to come to this place. And David says uh, that I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. When was this statement made? I, 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 I don't know. Was it at the beginning of the dialogue on the trip up to Jerusalem? Or was it right before they were about to get in the temple? I don't know, John, but what I do know is David was glad. Did the, did the incident occur in the exile or the post-exilic period? I, I don't know. Huh? Scholars don't say so. Huh? But what I do know huh, is that David is glad. Huh? Uh, huh? Did David pin these poetic words huh, after he fleed from Saul huh, and that, that, that fleeing had ended huh, and God had anointed him? Huh? I, I don't know. Huh? But what I do know, Charles, is huh, that he's glad. Huh? That time David had an opportunity uh, to get to the house of the Lord. Uh, it made him glad. Uh, and I'm so glad uh, that I got David's spirit in me. Uh, uh, maybe David thought about the manifestations of God. Uh, maybe he thought about the attributes of God. Uh, maybe he thought about the mercies of God. Uh, maybe he thought about the grace of God. Uh, maybe he thought about the love of God. Uh, maybe he thought about the provision of God. Uh, maybe he thought about the of God. I don't know what was on David's mind, but I know what's on my mind. I'm thanking God for his peace. I'm thanking God for his mercy. I'm thanking God for his grace. I'm thanking God for his mercy. I'm thanking God for his love. I'm thanking God for his provision. And I'm glad to be in the house. Boy, unfortunately, unfortunately, Living in a day and age, Steph, where some folk are sad. And some are bad. But they ain't glad when they come to this place. But I want to challenge you as a child of God that you should have feelings of gladness, feelings of joy every time you get the opportunity to come to God's house. And the reason is uh, joy is an internal contentment. Uh, I might not have joy on the outside, uh, but I got some joy on the inside. Uh, I don't let my present circumstances, uh, I don't let what's going on around me to determine whether I have joy. Uh, because this joy that I have, uh, the world didn't give it to me, uh, and the world can't take it away. I got joy because of Jesus. question, are you glad yeah. on this morning? Yeah. We look at this text a little closer on this 109th church anniversary. Yeah. I just want to drop a couple things on you real quick and we'll be on our way. Uh, the first thing is, the text teaches us, John, is the purpose for why we go to the house of the Lord. Right. Or why we come to this place yeah. called sanctuary. Uh, uh, we have a purpose for why we come. Yeah. We come to the house of the Lord because we have a reason uh, uh, for us. It, it, it's a reason uh, why we come. We just don't come. Some do, but, but if you really know your purpose, you know that you come for a reason. You see, God's house is where we find instruction uh, for life and living as the people of God. It's a place where we hear God's precepts uh, uh, for our life on a regular basis. Uh, it's where we hear the principles uh, for living the Christian life uh, on a regular basis. Uh, it is a place, fam, uh, where we receive spiritual food uh, to sustain us as we go through this journey called life. Uh, it's a place where you get manna uh, from the man or uh, woman of God uh, uh, that, that, that watches over your soul. Uh, yes, and that's why it's so important important to me, Damien, uh, that I have some food for you, uh, that I don't just whip it up quick. Uh, 
I let it marinate. I let it work through me throughout the week so that I can come to this place called sanctuary and give you some nourishment for your soul. God commanded Israel to gather at the tabernacle and later the temple to worship because in doing so it honored the word of the Lord. We come together today, week after week, to this place called sanctuary to hear God's word so that we can heed to God's word. Oh, you missed it, so let me back it up and say it again. You not only come to hear God's word, but you come to heed to God's word. You come to live by God's word. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 22, we ought to be doers of the word and not hearers only. It takes more than just hearing the word of God, but we must digest the word of God so that we can live out the word of God. You see, the purpose for being in this place, this place called worship, this place called sanctuary, this place called church, is because we need the word. We need the word to be a blueprint. We need the word to be a roadmap for our lives. Everything that we do should be centered around the word of God, that the word of God is at the heart of everything that we do. God's word must be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's word gives me direction for my life. It is the compass for my life. I don't know what I would do without the word. The word is what I need, Joy. It's not only the preach word, but it's the written word. I need God's word in my life because when hell is breaking loose and challenges are coming at me every which way, all I can depend upon is God and his word. That God's word is a life-changing word. It is a transforming word. Hear me now. God didn't call us to stagnation, but God called us to transformation. Oh, you don't want to shout, so let me help you real quick. When you understand that God didn't call you to be complacent, that God didn't call you to be stagnant, that God is transforming your life, transformation leads to Purposeful living now that you and I have the plans of God working in our life. Bam, I understand now more than ever that God's word allows me to walk in purpose, allows me to work in plan that I have purpose in my life. When I was just roaming around doing my own thing, I thought I had purpose. But when I met the Lord and that word began to work on my life, I realized that I really got that knows that the word has been working and the word will work if you let it work. Is there anybody besides me knows you're being transformed? You're not there yet, but you're still not what you were. Is there anybody can give God glory because you know that you're better now than you were? You can't discount the power that comes from hearing God's word. But not only can we not discount the power of hearing it, Pam, we got to not discount the power of heeding to his word. You see, this place of worship is a place to refuel me. It's a place to renew me. It's a place where I get stirred up in my soul and it empowers me to reach my goals. Oh, type that in. It's a place. It's a place. I'm excited on this church anniversary because I know what the purpose is for being in this house. And I'm glad on this church anniversary that I know part of the purpose is that the word goes forth. But not only does the word go forth, and I got to hear it and heed to it, but we come and go to this place. Come in this place. We go from home to this place so that we can herald the praises of Almighty God. Oh, you know, don't know when to shout, so let me help you real quick. We come to this place called sanctuary to praise our God, to give thanks unto his name. You see, the ancient Jews made their way up to the tabernacle and then to the temple. They cost them personally to get there, Charles. Uh, despite the difficulties uh, that they went to to get there, uh, they went there because they understood uh, that the price satisfied uh, their very souls, uh, that they needed to get to the prescribed place. Uh, it wasn't going to work at home. It wasn't going to work in the desert. 
not. They had to work through dirt, dust, and danger to get to the sanctuary. Ah, they pressed their way, John, to get to that place. And I'll stop by today to let somebody know, don't let what's pressing you keep you from praising him. Let me say that thing again. Don't let what's pressing you keep you from praising him. A part of our purpose is to praise. Our attitude toward God, Deacon Duck, will determine our view of praise. When we gladly enter into the Lord's house, we will have open minds, open hearts, and we're ready and willing to meet God in this place. And when we have the right attitude, when we're glad to be here, oh, miracles can happen. Breakthrough can happen. Deliverance can happen. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You got to learn to declare and decree. You got to open your mouth and make some vocal praise. You got to realize that praise is active. It's not passive. Praise has to be coming out of you. Whether you open your mouth, somebody might dance a little bit. Whatever you need to do, you got to learn to praise him through it all. Oh Lord, we give you praise. Oh Lord, we bless your name and we lift up our voices to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward us. We offer praise. You're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. You're worthy of all the praise for your goodness and your mercy shown toward us. We are the praise. Somebody ought to get excited because you've been given some praise. You've been given some goodness. You've been given some mercy. Give him praise. Don't fool me now. Is there anybody in this house or online? I'm glad you're in the number that you're in the praise party. Go ahead and praise him like the most of mine. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Purpose for coming to this place, Cap. Purposes to hear and to heed to God's word, but it's also to hurl the praises to our God. And I know I'm gonna kill the devil. Some folk act like all they're supposed to do is get here. And I'm gonna kill the devil on this church anniversary. It's more than you just getting here in any kind of way. You gotta get to this place. So you can give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. I got to be glad when I get here. you went through, why you went through it, but you come out victorious on your 
different in some ways. Uh, we come from different families. Uh, we come from different upbringing. Uh, we come from different points of view. Uh, with different backgrounds. With different expectations. Uh, with different levels of education. Uh, but despite our differences, uh, God has called us together. Somebody shout together. Somebody type in together. Hear me now. We can't lose uh, or let our differences uh, divide us uh, because they can us. Uh, you miss it, you don't know when to shout. Uh, but do us it to be all that and God is calling us to be in this next 109. Uh, then I got to realize uh, that I have to move myself out the way. Uh, uh, you got to do a self check uh, and make sure uh, that you're not a burden to the church, uh, but you are a blessing to the church. Uh, uh, let me help somebody. Uh, you got to realize uh, that God has gifted you, uh, that God has anointed you uh, for your life. Uh, for us to move to that next level of what God has shown me about Dorset, it's going to take togetherness uh, at a whole nother level. Uh, we got to have a common purpose. Uh, we got to have a common goal uh, that we want to see the church uh, be what God has called it to be. Uh, that's why I love what the psalmist says uh, in Psalm 133 verse 1. Uh, how good uh, and pleasant it is uh, when God's people live together the early church fam huh, worshiped together. Huh, they ate together. Huh, they served together. Huh, they praised God together. Huh, and what I love the most is huh, they enjoyed huh, the favor of God huh, because they did it together. Huh. Uh, somebody needs to know huh, we can get it done huh, if we work together. Huh, and sometimes huh, when we're working together, huh, I got to realize huh, I got to practice love. Huh, I got to demonstrate forgiveness. Huh, live in tolerance. I, I have to offer restoration. I, I have to shower mercy. I, and I gotta shut down discord. You gotta be the one who shuts it down because you realize God has called us to work together for the good of the church and what he's doing through the church. I don't care what they say online. I don't care what Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube says. The church it still needs to be the church And I'm going to keep preaching Church and kingdom Because they both have to exist God didn't call the church to fall He called us to be the church That's a move, fam But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 Verse 25 through 27 I want you to read this when you go home it says, so that there is no division in the body, but its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, uh, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you are a part of it. We not only are part of the body because of fellowship, but because we're family. I'm going to help you real quick. The, the, these Jews were blood relatives. And they looked at it as a family affair when they went to church together, went to the temple or to the tabernacle. And, and somebody said, well, I ain't sister there. I ain't blood relative, but you are. Because I need you to help somebody and help your neighbor understand uh, that you are, if you're saved, uh, you are a blood relative. Uh, and why are you a blood relative? Because we all have uh, been washed and saved uh, by the blood of Jesus. Uh, so don't let nobody keep you from being uh, who God has called you to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, that blood has redeemed me. Uh, and y'all don't know when to get excited. Uh, I guess I'm the only one excited uh, because I know how messed up I was. Uh, and I know God's redeeming blood uh, has washed me uh, whiter than snow. Is there anybody uh, to give God glory because you're in the family? You know how you were uh, when you were outside the family, but now you're in the family. But the family comes with some benefits. Oh, you don't know when to shout. See, see, being in the family comes with some benefits. I, I know, I know you think you got a little benefits package on your job, but this benefits package I got with God uh, is no comparison. Uh, and because I'm in his family, uh, that I'm an heir and a joint heir, uh, then I have some things uh, that the folk out there don't know him have. Uh, and I'm going to let 
a neighbor know today that I know that I'm saved. I know I'm secure. I know I'm sanctified. I know that God is doing some stuff in my life. I know it might not look like it, but I'm shown up in the benefit business because I'm getting God's glory every day of my life. I got to go for it. I got to go. I got to serve your communion. But, but, but you, you don't need to miss this part. I come to praise. I come to see the people. I come to be in fellowship and be in the family. But I also come because the person who I glorify is in this house. Put on your hand. So put on your hand. Oh, let me come get you real quick. David mentions four times, bam, in these nine verses. The Lord. Right. What I've told you, and for those who come to Bible study, who want to get better, who want to grow in their relationship is, don't ever miss the repetitive motion of words in the text. Whenever God repeats something, he needs you to know it, and he wants you to listen and pay attention to it. So David says that the Lord is at the heart of everything that I do. And David says that my life revolves around the Lord. Oh, you missed it because many times we want in our life to be our own and God to revolve around us when we want him to. But David says, no, everything in my life is about God and what God wants to do. He says, I have an opportunity to make God the centerpiece of who I am and in my being. That the Lord is the driving force that is directing my life. It is in him that I live, I move and have my very being. When David uses the name Lord, he's referring to Jehovah. Don't miss that for those in Bible study. You know Jehovah is the Lord our God in capital letters. Uh, it, it tells us that he's the eternal one. He's the self-existent one. That the Lord Jehovah has no beginning and he has no end. He's the God who's always been. He's the God who is and he's the God who shall be. Jehovah tells us that I am the one who sees. I am the one who knows and I am the one with you. Jehovah is the name God used to make him known himself known. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 14 when he tells Moses I am that I am. Uh, the English translation. I, I will be what I will be. Uh, I will cause to be what I cause it to be. Uh, by describing himself this way. Uh, God is saying I'm self-existent. Uh, and I am self-sufficient. Uh, and I don't depend on nothing or no one. Uh, because I am the creator. Uh, and I am the sustainer of all life. Uh, that God uh, is the one who can work in our lives. Uh, he is the personal God. Uh, he is the powerful God. Uh, he's responsible for existence. Uh, he's responsible for his sovereign will uh, working out in our lives. Uh, that you and I are kingdom citizens uh, with kingdom purpose. Uh, that we serve a God uh, who's the same yesterday, uh, today, and forevermore. Uh, there is no God uh, like Jehovah. Uh, he's the person uh, that we glorify uh, in this place. Uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, God gets the glory. Uh, we come to magnify our Lord. Uh, we should be glad uh, on this day uh, because the person uh, we glorify uh, is in this place. Uh, we have his presence uh, with us. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, the Bible says uh, in Psalm 16 and 11, uh, your presence in your presence uh, is the fullness of joy. Uh, and at your right hand uh, of pleasures forevermore uh, and being in the presence of Almighty God uh, provides me the opportunity uh, to experience the power of God uh, when I work my way uh, to the place called sanctuary. Uh, it is a reassurance uh, that takes place in my life. Uh, if it was not for the Lord uh, on my side, I don't know where I would be. Uh, if it was not for the Lord uh, directing me, uh, if it was not for the Lord keeping me, uh, if it was not for the Lord loving me, uh, if it was not for the Lord 
provided for me. If it was not for the Lord protecting me. If it was not for the Lord delivering me. If it wasn't for the Lord rescuing me. If it wasn't for the Lord sheltering me. If it wasn't for the Lord caring for me. If it wasn't for the Lord being faithful to me. Joy, I don't know where I would be. Because what I'm discovering is that every time I turn around, the Lord just keeps on blessing me. He's in the blessing business. So I come to give that person the praise. I come to rejoice on this day and be glad in Him. I came to experience His power. I came to experience Him in the house. Being in the presence picks me up. It elevates me. Is there anybody can be real that you got some Bless his name. The Bible says, Great is the Lord, 
and might in his power, his understanding has no limit. I love what David said in Psalm 27. He says, I, one thing I've desired of the Lord, that I will seek after him, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. It's important for us to understand what is your desire? Why do you come to this place called sanctuary? Do you come out of tradition? Do you come out of form or fashion because somebody told you to? Or because you want to have an encounter with a God who is still working? And I said he's the God who was, he's the God who is, and he's the God who shall be. Is there anybody besides me know that our God is able and he's capable to do what we need him to do? That he can do exceedingly abundantly of all that we can ask for things? Everyone standing. Bam, I'm hoping that there's somebody online who's worshiping by themselves is glad. They, they, they couldn't make it to this place in person, but they online and they, they, they glad. They, they glad. And I know that joy is an internal commitment. But if you don't have no expression about who God is and how yeah. God's doing something in your life, yeah. ask yourself, are you glad? Yeah. That's the question for you, because I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't for me. As I told, told a preacher earlier this week, one of the things that I, I must be honest, I try to be honest because I'm a transparent pastor, that Bible study is not for me. In this season of pastoring and taking this church to where God wants it to be, you need to look at your life and see if you're going to be obedient. Some stuff ain't working for you because you ain't obedient. I know you don't want to hear it, but I'm going to say it. Because I'm your Aaron and your her. <laughs> yeah. Other folk telling you stuff that you want to hear, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. Because why I want you to understand, not trying to be proud or boastful. I'm going to study God's word whether you come to Bible study or not. See, let me help you understand. I have so many phases to my life with the Lord. I, 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 don't, I study the word for Bible study. I study the word for Sunday morning. But then I study the word for my own press or growth and development. That's that thing called devotional life. Every day. Every day. Because I know what the Lord means to me. So Bible study is for you. It's a place where like Tuesday, Wednesday night, got so rich from a question, Stephanie, that took me into a whole other place. We've been rolling in the names of God. We, we hadn't had one that we've had two weeks with, right? Because we've been rolling. But the Lord said, no, no, no. Somebody asked a question and we went to another place. It's on this 109th church anniversary. Why are you just coming to hear God's word? Or are you going to be willing to heed to God's word? To follow his word. Obedience. Obedience. I can tell you today that some things are working at my house, Bam, because I'm obedient to God's will. Some things that used to get me don't get me no more. Because I have relationship with God. I said to the worship team a few weeks ago, and, and we were talking, and somebody said, part of the problem is we, we do it on Sunday, and we don't do nothing during the week, and then we try to pick it back up the next Sunday. Don't, this ain't new power. So if Joy hits some switches off there and turn the lights off, they're going to come back up. That's not how I like what God is. You cannot turn it all and on. And part of the problem, Amanda, is... Some people have been trained in church that you can't enjoy life. They, they, they have this misconception that 
All I do is read my Bible. No, no, no. I do, I do that too. But, 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 but I promise you, last weekend when I was with Lady Sonia, I had a good time. Amen. I still love the Lord. Amen. And that's a part of the challenge for us. It, it, do you view your life as sacred and secular? See, most people live their lives in division. I got a second life Monday through Saturday, and then I got a sacred life on Sunday. We go from here to there, week after week, back and forth. It is. I won't say it. Since Thomas Eden, y'all can hear it. She'll tell you what it was. She said, that's bipolar. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Your pastor didn't say you was bipolar. I didn't say it. Since Thomas Eden said it. But it's true. I view all of my life as sacred. Even having fun with Lady Simon. Even dancing on the rooftop. I, I couldn't believe it, Sister Mabel. My brother put up that post on Thursday. I said, good Lord, he, he called me in action. I love to dance. So what's wrong with that? I still love the Lord. I love to dance. I love to have a good time. You heard Shantae say, I got a humor to me. I love, I, if I wasn't doing this fashion thing, I'd be on the road. I'd be a comedian. Because what I've discovered is, I don't know what it is about pastor, but all of us become pretty good comedians. Because we have to laugh so we don't cry. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm just talking. Part of the thing I said to the worship team, I've been saying to the leaders, man, God is challenging me. Amen. I, I went to Jordan, and it was a life-changing experience. Amen. Not only about the culture, but what God did in me Amen. in Jordan. Amen. And I cannot come back to the same. Amen. So, so somebody looking for me, he gone. You've got to realize that God is a God of movement. Yes, yes. And our level of commitment as we get ready to go to Holy Communion will be important in this season. Yes. It's a personal check. It's a self-check for all of us. I do this thing as we go to communion. You can be seated. I do this thing, ma'am, called self-check. Self-evaluation. Because I understand that God is still working on me, in me, yes. and through me, right? Yes. So we have to evaluate where we are with God. And are we going higher with God? Or are we staying right there saying that's enough? We have to realize that our excitement, our joy, us being glad, becomes contagious. Yes, the reason that I'm here today is because of God. Amen. But God used some people in Charlotte to get me to this place. Amen. And because, Sister Moore, Mother Moore, that they were willing to show that they were glad to stand in a line in the rain pouring down rain to get in the next service. I said, my God, they, they must want to be in the house. Amen. They didn't stay home, Dr. Barry, because it was raining. It was a little cloudy out there. I want to encourage you, even for our online audience, if you have not made your place way back to this place called sanctuary in, in person, Amen. I challenge you. Amen. I challenge you to not just continue to stay at home. If I can go to Walmart, I see you. Sometimes I put my hat on, Joe. I pull it down so you can't see me. I see you. I see you at Concord Bills. See, see you everywhere but this place. Something's, something's wrong. And I want to challenge us. I want to challenge us as a church 
for my deacons, for my leaders to ask, why are you not coming to church? Why? I know you ain't asking. Gotta ask. It may be a good reason. It may be. But some ain't got no good reason. <laughs> now I thank God for technology because we got some folk on today who couldn't get here. And I thank God. I thank God for Mother Moore and others who can't get here and, and others who have been able to be online. But everybody online. Amazing. We got to go to communion. But whoever, we won't be here for the whole next 109. I don't think. Good Lord. If you do, man, let me know what you got. Let me know what you're working with because I want some of that. But I, I don't believe we're going to be here for the next 109. But we, we help the next 109. And, and so. We got to do what we need to do for the Michaelas of the world, and for the MJs and for the Zays of the world, for our babies, so that they can build upon what we're doing and it just keeps on building. Because our founders wanted us to do more than they did. Every generation should do more than the previous generation. If you're doing less than your mom and them, there's a problem. Yeah. If grandma and them was doing better, something's wrong. We, we should be getting better. Yeah. We should be learning. Yeah. We do this together. We're better together than we're ever apart. God is calling us to a place to work out his mission and his plan for this world. Is there anybody besides me, man, that gets a knot in your stomach when 180 people get stampeded at a soccer game? Did you, did you get a pit in your stomach on Wednesday when Thursday when Hurricane, hurricane was flowing? I, I, they, my daughter and them tell me I butchered the name, so I ain't going to say it. You know the hurricane. <laughs> him. Ian. Him. Him. Yeah, I, I like to call him Ian. So, uh, Ian. And I say that to all to say this, man. I'm waiting right now on a person who's a friend of mine, who worked with me, who lives in Fort Myers. I have not heard from them since the hurricane went through. But I'm trusting God that it's because cell phones ain't working. That's what I'm trusting God for. But but it, it, it brought reality to home. <sighs> Trees down in this area. That wind was blowing so hard at my house on Friday night. Woo! That rain was blowing. Say all that to say is time is winding up. You better get your business straight. This time is winding up. We, we come to the table today because this is the place that God has told us to come to as we come to the table you might be in this place and don't know Jesus you might be online and you don't know him as Savior I want, I want to introduce you to him because I need you to know him that's what matters for all of us because the Bible declares if we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. It's not a matter of feeling, it's a matter of faith. Do you believe that God's word is true? If you believe that is true and you're, you're not saved, I just want you to pray with me. Lord, I'm a sinner, I cannot change that, but I came to this place called sanctuary in person and online because I wanted to be in the presence of you in the presence of a community of faith and I need Jesus in my life I've been trying to do this my way and it ain't working so I've decided on this day I ain't waiting not a day longer the second day of October I'm going to give my life to Jesus and I want him to be my personal savior and I believe that in my heart that he is 
my redeeming Lord. Amen. With that being said on my mind on this day, if that's you in this place or online, I want you to type it in online. I want salvation. If you're in the building, let me or one of our ministers know. Sonia, raise your hand. And Minister Bruce, raise your hand. Our deacons sitting here, tell us that you want to be saved and we want to make sure that we put the information in your hands. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Second call, you're saved. But you've been shopping. You've been chilling. You've been coming on a regular, but you need a church home. You want to be a place where you can be connected. There's a lot going on that you don't see on Sundays that's happening during the week. Connection matters. And so if you want to be a part of a body of Christ that is working on our togetherness, working on our unity, working on being better people, then we need you. Because the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We need more people to get the mission of God out. If you're looking for a church home, I'd love to be your pastor. You can come on today by Christian experience, by watch care, by letter from your home church. If you've never been a part of a church, you can join as well. If there's one, let me know. We'd love to have you here. We need more laborers. Ministers, if you would come, our deacons would come at this time and serve Holy Communion. done out of form or fashion. But it is what the Lord requires of us. He says that you do this in remembrance of me. He says, I don't want you to ever forget what it took for your salvation. <laughs> he says, it, it, it took my, my body being broken, my blood being shed for me to hang on that cross between the sixth and the ninth hours. It got dark. He asked the Father, my God, my God, why has thy forsaken me? Scripture says that it got so dark, the temple veil was being torn in two. It symbolizes the whole notion of what Jesus had to go through. All the weight was on him. But bam, he would not come down off the cross to save himself. Because he understood his purpose had to be fulfilled. What if he had aborted his purpose? Then the church would not matter. Salvation would not. But he did not do it. Because he knew purpose fulfillment had to take place. So we come to the table today just to think about what he's done. Reflect on what he's done. But we also come to the table because we know that he's coming back again. Yeah. And what we do for him really matters because he is coming back. The Bible says, right? Dead in Christ shall rise first. Yeah. Right? He talks about us being caught up to meet him in the air. We don't know which version we're going to be in. Yeah. One way or the other. Thomas said, I'm going back. I'm going with him. Yeah, yeah I know where my home is. Yeah temporary living quarters down here on earth. I'm, I got another home. Not made by human hands. Building made by God. Mansion. He, he says, in my father's house <laughs> are many mansions. And so I believe in God's word for what shall be. But until that time, I'm going to remember, I'm going to reflect, and I'm going to look forward to the second coming of our Lord. Everyone standing at this time as we pray and take Holy Communion. If you have your communion, get ready. God, we bless you and we thank you for you seeing fit to have your hand on Dorset Chapel. We don't take it for granted that we've been able to exist 
be able to thrive and to, to do what you've called us to do in this season. But we know that you have more for us to do. So God, we trust you with it all. We trust you with everything for every resource that we need. Whether it's in money, whether it's in people, whether it's in land, whatever we need, you will provide for us. We look to fulfill your mission in the earthly realm. So we come to the table thanking you for the blood that was shed, for the body that was sacrificed on Calvary's hill. So Lord, on this day, we come to this table Asking for forgiveness of any sin. Anything that keeps us from taking this in damnation. We ask now forgiveness. Thank you God for forgiveness. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So that we can take this. Truly remembering. Truly reflecting. And truly looking forward. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sing it for me, man. things together when we can't see it. 
So God, we thank you for 109 years. We thank you, Lord, for the church and what the church means. Help us, oh God, to, to think to the church as Jesus says that upon this rock I build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus, the chief cornerstone, builds the church and we build on him. So God, we thank you that our chief cornerstone, that our cornerstone is in place as we continue to erect the church that you're calling for in these last and evil days. It is my prayer that you watch over my neighbor, watch over every person in this sanctuary all this week. God, I'm asking that you touch those who've been affected by hurricane on this week. God, that you can get back material, but you can't get back your life. So God, we ask right now that in the recovery and the continued rebuilding of those, those areas along the coast, southwest coast of Florida, that you would help those and those in central Florida and on the east coast of Florida, South Carolina, oh God, and even those in our area that saw trees that toppled and things that take place on this week. But even as I looked at some pictures on today and yesterday, I'm grateful that what was taken out was not me. And I have an opportunity to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that you deserve because you've kept me. So keep us, oh God, is my prayer. And that God, we would go throughout this week with Jesus' joy because you give it to us even in the midst of it all. God, we love you and we bless you and we thank you for all things. Because we believe that all things are working for our good for those who love you, who are called according to your purpose. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Sing it. Oh. Don't forget to travel around.